I'm Willow, and I followed the family tradition of making my own path. Things can get a little crazy. I'm an artist with a great passion for nature. And now I'm also the owner of my very own cozy art studio. I travel to replenish my artistic soul and to share my experience with others. Join me to ignite your artistic self, get inspired, and see daily life and create with me at Wilhelmina Art Studio. With a little help, we make it all happen, one paintbrush stroke at a time. Hello, you guys. So I want to do a fun kind of winter themed painting. And I was kind of thinking about like a winter wonderland with some snowmen and maybe some twinkling lights in the background. So I'm going to get started sketching and then show you guys what I'm planning for this week's paint along. Alright, so here we go. This is a sketch. So nice, happy snowman. And we have a hill back there with some children sledding, pine trees, and then we have our twinkling lights that go up and around, around the neck of the snowman, and they twist around the top hat that he's wearing. So there's a lot happening in this sketch here, but we're going to be painting it on an 11 by 14 canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and get that and get started. We're gonna do this all in acrylic painting. If you wanna do oils though, you could definitely do that. And I always like to do sometimes is do acrylic painting first, and then I can put the oils on top of it if I really like the painting. So that's always a fun kind of uh, process to do. So I'm gonna get the supplies and then let's get started. With a pencil, I'm just going to sketch out an oval shape for the top of the top hat, so it's just a nice oval. And then I'm just doing a little straight line on either side of the outermost point of the oval. And you're going to continue downward on the left side and bringing it out. And then you're going to do a little bit of a curve, and that is for the brim of the hat. And I love doing a little sash around the hat, and that's going to be a nice red color. Next up, we're going to go ahead and do a partial oval shape for the face, and that's tucked underneath the hat. And then we start with the second oval shape that is the midriff of our snowman. And think of parentheses. So start on one side and then do a parenthesis on the other. Don't worry about making anything perfect. We just want to get down the rough shape because when we're painting, we can make adjustments. So we're just going to do a few very loose lines just to get a ground line so we know where is the snowman sitting. And we're going to add a little carrot nose to our snowman. And when you do the carrot nose, just do a little squiggle with your hand, nice and loose. Don't make it perfect. You don't want a perfect triangle shape. And for the branch arms, again, have a little shake to your hand so that way it has a natural twiggy feel to it. It's not perfectly straight. We don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and put in a loopy line that is going to be for the lights, which, which is going to be a necklace for the snowman. And it's going to go up in the air, actually. So we have a little bit of a whimsical touch happening. And it's going to loop around the top hat. So it's snaking behind the hat. I'm going to do an S shape in front of it. And then it goes a little above. And then it goes off to the right side. Next up, we're going to put in the little lights that are attached to the string we put in. And I like to think of it as like a teardrop shape. And each one is going to be a different size. We don't want them all to be, you know, a medium size. You want some of them large, some medium, and some small. And 
and also have them going in different directions. So have some going inside the line and some going outside the line. Now we're going to go ahead and put in a sledding hill and we're going to make a giant one and it's going to go over on the right hand side. And I'm just doing really sketchy pine trees and I'm going to do about three of them over on the edge of the slope. And then at the top of the hill, one pine tree. Then behind the snowman on the left side, just a gradual hill and even tinier pine trees that are right above that hill. We're just going to put in a little, little people down at the base of the hill. We're going to have some people sledding. I'm just doing a dot for the head, kind of a triangle shape for the body, and then a swoop for the sled. So nothing too detailed because it is so far away. Imagine we're up on a hill and we're looking at this beautiful scene. Now let's get started painting. With our acrylic paints, you're going to go ahead and put them on a paper plate like so. And I like using a limited palette, so only the primaries. So I have the red, yellow, and blue with some white on my palette. And I also use a square or rectangle flat brush and then a size two angle brush. And these two brushes is, and I'm only gonna be using these two brushes for this entire painting. And again, I'm painting on an 11 by 14 canvas and it is all sketched out and we are ready to get started. I'm mixing up a bit of light blue and so put some white on your palette and put a tiny bit of blue into it and we're just going to have some really nice energetic strokes at a diagonal filling in the sky area. And you, here you can see my mixture and you can see that I have a little bit too dark, but that's okay. We can have some variation in the sky. It doesn't all have to be one flat color of blue. And then if you have different tones of blue, just kind of use your stroke back and forth to start to blend them together. But make sure you still can see your brush strokes. We want to make sure those are evident on the canvas. We don't want them to be completely erased away. So just be careful you're cutting in around the light string that we have it swirling throughout the painting. So we're just working our way in and around our drawing. Just make sure you're loading up your brush quite a bit. You can see I'm getting a little lighter my blue color as I'm working my way over to the left. I'm just putting in a little bit more lightness over on the right. And I want the sky to be more saturated towards the top of the canvas, and then it will get lighter as it gets further down. That will make it more atmospheric and seem like the sky goes on and on and on. So 
So just be careful cutting in around your Christmas lights. We're cutting in and around them with the light blue color. You can see I'm going in more saturated in the top corner. Now just blending in a little bit more of a light blue on top of that saturated corner. Now we're going to mix up a very, very light purple. So we're going to put a little bit of red into our light blue mixture. And we're going to apply this color right behind our pine trees. And this will give the illusion that our perspective, our atmospheric perspective, it's going to push the distance even further. So it's really going to appear like the distance is even further back there and it will give the appearance also that maybe it's distant trees or maybe even distant mountains. It gives that general idea that there's something more back there and it's further away. So using a light purple and pushing it into the light blue that we already have down on our canvas and it's mixing a little bit on the surface of the canvas that will give that really nice appearance that there's something more back there. Next up, we need to mix up a really nice green. Now this green isn't going to appear very nice on the palette, but when you apply it on the canvas, that is where it's gonna look like it's meant to be there. So what I did is I put some, so what I'm doing is putting some yellow, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red mixed together. And you can see once it's applied on the canvas, this color is gonna look like it's supposed to be there. And this is a perfect pine tree color for in the distance. And my brush still has a little bit of the lilac lavender purple color on it. So when I push my brush down with this green color, it comes through a little bit and that's a good thing. So we're getting hints of that purple blue coming through in the pine tree color. In this in-between pine tree, I just added a little bit more yellow to my brush so that way we can distinguish the two pine trees a little bit more clearly. So now I'm just adding a little bit of that blue-purple color on top of the pine tree just to make it look like it's even further back in the distance. Loading up again with the pine tree color behind the arm twig of the snowman. So again, just being careful cutting in around that arm. Just adding a little bit more yellow to it. Mixing up more of this color. If it gets too brown looking, add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more blue. And you can see my strokes are very gestural. So that just means very loose and I'm stroking up and down a little bit of a zigzag in the shake of the hand. And I'm not brushing excessively. I'm just kind of putting down the color and letting it sit on the canvas. And again, applying that lilac blue color a little on top of the pine trees, just a few strokes just to set them back so they look like they're further in the distance. Okay, 
All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and get a nice light blue similar to the sky color. And so we're just going to notch in over on the bottom right of where the last ball of the snowman is connected to the ground. This is going to be a bit of a shadow. And you can see how much paint I have on my flat brush. So it's not a whole it's not excessive, but there is quite a bit so that way when I put it down, it covers the canvas. Also notice the direction my brush is going in. So it's going at a diagonal because that hill back there is sweeping to the left. So we want to make sure our brush strokes are also going in that direction. Now I'm going to apply the same blue over on the left side, right up next to the snowman, because that's going to push it back in the distance, and the snowman will appear up close to us in the foreground. So we want to make sure is that we have good contrast behind the snowman. And so I'm going to push that contrast even more, and I'm making this really pretty blue teal color. A bit of an ultramarine blue kind of phalo color and so we need to push that further so now you can see that will give a nice background to the snowman so the snowman is our focal point so we want to make sure is that there's a good contrast the behind is further back and then the snowman will be well lit and it's up in the foreground I'm just going to take a little bit more of this color into the shadow, into that valley of the hill. And again, thinking about the direction the hill is going in, so I want to apply my strokes in a similar direction. Now we're going to grab a little bit more light blue and we're just going to block in this whole area behind the snowman. Make sure you have fun with your brush strokes. Don't feel like you have to blend everything in seamlessly because this painting takes quite a bit of layers. So once we get this down, you're going to notice it's going to look like the sky continues all the way through, like there's no hill. But we will be adding other colors on top of this. This is kind of like that base layer. So then we can start to put some more interesting colors on top. More light blue and a tiny bit of red mixed in there. So getting that nice soft purple. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch up my strokes and I'm putting them more at a square flat angle. And I'm more notching in the shapes so I'm not blending anymore. You can see when you start doing these strokes, it really sets back the hillside. And it's nice having a wet coat of paint underneath, so then that way when you apply the color on top, the light purple, it just sits right on top. You don't see any of the white coming through of the canvas. And I'm also going to apply the light purple along the hill 
I'm also going to apply the light purple along the edge of the hill here and along the base of the sledding hill. So more white, a little bit more white added to the same color. Again, thinking about the angle of the hill. So more white has been added to my brush and I'm just applying that at the base of the hill. And again, using the flat side of the flat brush, so that way you have more of a rectangular stroke. Now I'm adding, this is going to be, this is going to seem a little daring, but a little yellow into that same color. And it's going to be a very light, creamy color. And I'm just putting that a little bit along the edge of that soft purple. Again, not blending too much. If I pick up a little bit of purple, I'm just going to put down a few extra strokes with that mixture. But then I'm going to go ahead and reload my brush with more of that creamy, yellow, purpley color. And just carefully going around the little people on the drawing, not worrying too much about getting close to them right now. And that hillside, it's going to be pretty well lit, so that's why we're adding a little bit more warmth to the side of the hill, getting some of that reflection happening. Now with the same nice buttery color, we're going to apply it to our snowman. <clears throat> and we have to think about the light hitting, we have to think about the direction the light is coming from. So on the right side of the snowman, we're going to have it a little bit warmer with this nice yellowy white color. And then a little bit on the brim of the hat also. And also apply a little bit to the front little slope in front of the snowman. Now I'm just going to mush in a little bit more of this creamy color into some of that purple violet color that we already had on our palette. So that way there's a little hint of that coolness for the hill in the far back, but there's also some of that lightness too. So it's a combination of that cool and warm on that distant hill back there, just very lightly applying this color. Now just a little bit more of a deeper purple with a touch of yellow in it just to make it more muted. And again, very sparingly, just adding, just dropping in some really nice bold strokes on top of that darkest blue that we first applied. Now with a little bit of light blue with a touch of yellow. 
just going to put in the shadow on the snowman and it's going to seem very harsh at first but we need to have a dark in there so that way the light appears even brighter and we're going to make a really nice dark shadow on the bottom left Now with just some plain white, we're going to go over the top of what we just put in. And you can see now it looks really nice and soft. And we're pulling that really light blue down onto the full roundness of the bottom. And if it gets a little too dark, just add a little bit of white. But make sure we have some dark in there. So that way we have a good sense of values. We want to make sure we have light, medium, and dark. Just being really careful, cutting it around the light bulbs. and adding a little bit of plain white to mix in with the warm yellowy white. <clears throat> Just going in and around the eyes, above the mouth. We're just putting in a little bit of that purpley, really, really light purple color on the side of the dark shadow on the bottom left. Now we're going to go ahead and get our black with our size 2 angle brush. And you can see how it's shorter on one end and longer on the other. And so we're just going to put a little bit of paint on that brush. You can see it's on the tip. And also notice the angle it's going at. I have the left side is the long side, short side is on the right. So that is the angle I'm going in and holding the brush at. And so we're just going to drag it along. And this is the Christmas light string that we're putting in. And make sure you don't do it all in one swoop. Lift your brush up to help get you the right pressure and angle so you can see I'm going doing a swoop and then I stop apply more paint do another swoop stop apply more paint so do it more in dashes that way then you can easily connect them but it's okay if there is no connection at all you'd rather that than it be a really thick heavy line and then it's really hard to try and get rid of that heavy line to go in and try and do white and all that. So just do kind of small, light, wispy dashes and then you can slowly start to connect them. I'm just gonna continue with that same approach with a little size two angle brush. Make sure long side is on the left, short side is over on the right. That way then you have a really nice line and it takes very little effort to get a really nice organic line and again for the smile make sure it's a broken line you don't need it to be perfect because you can just do little dots in between the broken lines and for the eyes just do a little dash now let's get started outlining the hat also outlining the sash. I'm just doing a quick little fill in on the left side of the hat. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start outlining the little light bulbs for the Christmas lights. 
So I'm just putting two parallel lines where they are attached to the string. Okay, now we're gonna start to mix up some fun colors. So I want kind of a nice golden bronze color for the yellow lights. So I'm just going in with the yellow, a little red, a tiny bit of blue. And we're just gonna pick and choose which lights we want to be what colors. So you could do all red, you could do all yellow or all blue, but I'm gonna do a variation of different colors. So I'm gonna be doing this golden color, some blues, and a red. So here I have a really nice kind of cherry red color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just blocking in the lights right now. I'm not putting any details and I'm gonna wait for that until this layer dries completely. Then I'll go back into it and I'll show you how I do that at the end of this video. Now we're going to get some blue. Now time for some green lights. This is such a nice bright Kelly green color. Let's mix up some colors for the top hat. So I'm gonna get a nice deep blue color with a little red mixed into it. And I'm just gonna apply this over the top of that quick fill in we did of black. So this will add some coolness on the left side of the hat. Now I'm just getting a little bit more blue on my brush and adding that just below that blue-black section. Now I'm adding a little bit more yellow into that same mixture, so we're getting a little warmer as we're getting to the lighter side of the brim of the hat. That same color on the upper portion of the hat. Now some pure yellow right on top and this is pretty thick the paint and so we're just having fun mushing that paint around. You can see it seems so vibrant and bright. 
and then the Christmas lights, when we add a second coat to them, they will also be equally as bright, so it won't seem so stark. The top of the hat has a little bit of that green color, and I love putting a red sash on the hat. So the green and the red are complementary colors, and they look so beautiful together. So you want to make sure we have that on the hat. And we need to make sure we fill in the carrot nose. And just make sure you put a blob at the base and then you're just dragging it out to the tip. Let's mix up a nice light purple. And we're just gonna put a few dashes with the number two angle brush for some snow in the background. So just some little dashes just to help transition the dark to the lighter blue. And now with the lighter purple, that is a great in-between color. Just being careful skipping around the branches of the arms. And just kind of cleaning up the edge a little bit of the snowman and adding touches of this purpley color on the pine trees so that way they look like they have a little bit of snow on them. And on the left side I'm just adding that same purple color for a transition from that dark purple to the light blue. Now just a little bit of yellow into the white so that way we get some really nice bright reflective snow at the base of the sledding hill. Again think about angles when you're applying your paint. Just adding a bit of that really bright white with a little bit of yellow onto the bright side of the snowman. And I'm just touching a little bit of that black on with this light white so then that way there's a tiny bit of a shadow that gets cast onto the snowman's body. So I'm just picking and choosing where to put that really nice bright snow. And just kind of cleaning up too if you have a space of the raw canvas showing from where we put the black line in and there isn't any snow color next to it, definitely go in with the nice bright yellow close up to it just so it has a nice fluid background of the hill that is behind the Christmas lights. A little bit more white added to our purple and I'm just going to add that to the bottom of the canvas here so that way we have the really nice warm yellowy snow where the light is hitting and then we have a coolness next to it and then just taking a little bit of that warm yellow 
along the edge of that purple that we just put in. So that is a transition. So then we have a nice warm transition and then cool purple for a nice subtle shadow. And I'm pushing the contrast just a tiny bit more behind the snowman on the left side. And you can see as soon as you do that, now the snowman really jumps forward a lot more. Now just adding a little bit of that lighter purple on top just so you're having that subtlety so it's not super harsh but it is a little darker than it was. So continuing with some of that purple on top of the light blue so that way it looks like it's a continuous hill back there. We don't have random sky coming through. And now using that same purple I see there's some white areas left around the branches of the arms. So just doing a little dash to fill that up and if you go a little on top of the branch that's okay. So there we go. Now we're going to let that dry completely and then we'll come back and add details to this painting to finish it up. It's the next day. The painting has dried and we have our number two angle brush and we're going to add in the details today. So we're going to mix up a nice brown color on the top hat and we're just going to be touching up little details all over on this painting so it is nice and finished and completed. So we're just going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of green and add a little red into it and a little bit of white and so that will get you a brown. And once you have that color mixed up we're going to apply it right here not on the tip of the brim, but more closer to that red sash. And we're just going to kind of tone down a little bit of our cools and warms on the top hat. Just make sure you have some fun with your brush strokes. We're not trying to cover the under layer. We're just adding an additional layer on top of it. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that same color making it a tint, so just making it a little bit brighter on the right side. And a little bit on top of the yellow, not too much, just a little bit. And then on the brim, just a few little dashes. Now just going in with a touch of red adding an additional layer on top of the sash. Make it look nice and velvety. And then since I have the red on my brush, I'm just gonna go in on the undersides of the lights, the Christmas lights, the red ones. So using the pure candy red color on the underneath part of those lights, just making them a little bit more opaque. Now just adding a little bit of white to my brush and going on the opposite side with a dash. So that way it has a little bit of a highlight on the light bulb. Just 
just adding a little dash on the center of the bulb. That way it's not just 50-50 shade and light. There's a little bit of that transition in the mid-tone, in the middle of the light bulb. All right, now let's mix up a nice, bright, happy, energetic green. So yellow with a tiny bit of blue and a little bit of white. And this is gonna be for the light side of the green Christmas light bulbs. Now I'm just mixing up a little bit of a darker green and that is going to go on the shadow side and I'm just going along the transition edge. So the edge of where the light green is, where it meets with the under layer green, we're just gonna go and just kind of use your brush a little back and forth just to blend that. And it's okay if it's not completely blended, it should have a little bit of like a swirl of the light green into the dark green. And if you lose a little bit of the light green, just go ahead, get some lime green and do a little dash to bring it back. Now mixing up the next light bulb color, some blue with a tiny bit of white in it, not too much. But just making that a bit more dense, the color. You can see when you start to apply layers of color on top of each other, it really starts to create some depth to the objects. And so I'm just doing little dashes of white on the light bulbs and a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to do it in the exact same spot on every single light bulb because then it gets a little bit too repetitive and um, it just kind of seems like cookie cutter. So you want to make sure there's some variation to your highlights when you're applying it to objects. Now I'm just going in and mixing up a gold color or kind of like a antique bronze color for the yellow um, gold uh, Christmas light bulbs. And so again, just adding another layer on top of those with the darker bronze color. And then I'll go in with a white, not cleaning my brush out. Uh, so it's just a tint of the same color and that way then you have a little bit of a highlight on the light bulb. And I realize I just missed this one here. You're gonna notice that the light bulbs, they tend to disappear on you, so gotta get that one in there. Oh, better, there we go. Now I'm going in with the light blue. And I want to mix up a nice sky color because you'll notice that where that <clears throat> where that ribbon goes through for the Christmas light, I didn't go up to it uh, on the previous day. So we need to touch that up and just kind of get those areas notched in. 
but we don't want to do it heavy handedly. So what I mean by that is do it more in dashes and kind of a chunk of a stroke. So you're going to just go ahead and do a stroke. You can do a little bit back and forth and then just leave it because notice the sky has variation in it. So there is some mid-tone blue, there is some lighter blues. So we don't need it to be a perfect match. So try not to go too overboard with trying to make it, you know, disappear. It's okay to have your brush stroke evident on the canvas. And kind of think you're notching in the color. And it's also a really good idea to step back from your painting. Sometimes we can get caught up on being super zoned in to one particular area and we're like two inches away from the canvas working on these details. But we have to realize no one's really going to be two inches up close to your painting. So make sure you stand back, prop your painting up, or if you have it on easel, step back, look at it, see what you think and then go back into it. And also look at your painting from different distances. It's always a good idea to look from a foot away, look away, look at it from four foot away, look at it from, if you have a hallway, down the hall. Because it's good to have, to see your painting at those different distances because you might notice something that is really sticking out that needs to get adjusted um, at those different distances from your artwork. So we're just touching up a little bit more. I'm just going in with the black with the eyes a little bit. I added a little bit of a light blue shadow on the left side underneath the brim of the hat on the snowman's face. Again, very subtly. And where the light bulbs attach to the cord, I'm mixing up a kind of violet color. So a purple for where the light bulb is connected to the cord and the light is connected to that kind of plug device. And I just realized I missed a light bulb back here and it's a green one. So I need to put that back in. Now it's just a little bit of white on my number two angle brush. Now it's a little bit of white on my number two angle brush I'm using. I'm just going along the cording in front of the top hat. Now I'm applying a little bit of black underneath that line. Again, don't worry about doing it all in one stretch. You can do little dashes and then connect the dashes together. And I'm just taking this black, which has a little tiny bit of white in it, so it's a really dark gray, and I'm just touching up a few of those lines. You just want to make sure is that you have a very, very light touch. You're dragging the brush. You're not putting any pressure down on the bristles. All right, let's add in a little bit of snow on top of the top hat, so just a little dabs. And then you're just dragging those dabs and then lifting up. So dab, drag, lift up. And then do that in different scales. So do a dab, drag, in a small scale, dab, drag, in a medium, and then in a large, and then that way you'll have nice variation to it. And I'm doing it on the brim and the top of the top hat.
Now with a nice warm yellowy snow color, I'm just going to make the bottom right side of the snowman a little bit rounder. Just kicking that out a little bit so that way it's a little bit more symmetrical. And we really want to push that warmth because the light is coming from that side. I'm just seeing where else should I add this warmth? So just add a little bit of white to my brush. I think that looks good with that color. All right, now we're gonna go in with a gray and we're gonna start to sketch out the people, the little scene behind our snowman. So there's some kids sledding, or I shouldn't even say kids, I'd be sledding down that hill. All right, so I'm just doing a little dot for the head, a little triangle shape for the body. It can be incomplete, it doesn't have to be filled in. And then a little kind of smiley face swoop for the sleigh that they are sledding down the hill on. And then for the people down below, I'm just doing a dot and a straight line for their bodies. And let's have someone who's getting ready to go down the hill at the way top. Again, same approach, dot, little triangle shape, and then a little smiley face. And then I do a little curve on the left side that goes up. So it's kind of like those vintage sleighs. And I'm also going to put just a few little dashes for the arms of the people down below. It seems a little harsh, the value of the people, because remember, they're really far away. So we need to make them look like they're even further away than they are right now. So I'm just adding a little bit of that violet color on top of the outline of the dark gray. Again, not doing it exact, just doing little dots and dashes just to break it up to give the appearance that they are further away. There we go, that's a bit softer looking now. So I'm just doing a little bit of touch-ups with this nice soft yellow color. I didn't cut in very close. So I'm just going in and touching those little areas up. Just adding a few little reflective spots on the snowman. And I'm just dropping in a little bit more of a deeper purple into the background area. Just some areas that I missed in the last round of painting. And these shapes that I'm putting in could allude to distant trees or even more of a forest or hills back there. It just gives it more atmosphere in the painting. You can see just adding this little bit of purple on the side of what meets up to the snowman just again pushes the snowman closer up to us and makes the background look like it's further away. And I'm just going to go in with a signature in the bottom right corner. And I like to just do my initials, a W and a G. And I'm doing it in that 
violet color that I made a little bit deeper so there's a bit more contrast to it. For finishing touches here, I'm just adding a little bit of white paint on my little brush with some water and I'm just doing a little bit of splatter to make it look like there's some snowflakes falling on the upper portion of the painting. And voila, we have completed this magical snowman painting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. and. Only if you're able, please send a Venmo donation to my account, which is WillowG3. I'm wearing a black beret in my profile picture when I took a trip to Amsterdam. Please make sure to like and subscribe my channel and check back every week where I post a new video of a paint along or things that I'm doing around the studio. Have an artful day.